Okay, welcome everybody to step by step music arrangement. Um, uh, <laughs> I just finished the first session only half an hour ago, um, but it was fun and uh, it's very encouraging because I think when everybody's staying at home now and getting together, there's a feeling of you're not so alone, you know. So it's quite fun. Um, and another thing is that hugely, at actually today is supposed to be our open house at FM Pop Music School. Um, but because of the COVID situation, that's why we switched it around and do a live streaming thing instead. And it actually worked out because there's, we couldn't squeeze so many of you in our classroom, you know. So <laughs> it's been great. Um, and I'd like to thank everybody for all the questions. There's already a whole lot of questions, which is great because that's what this whole thing is for. We are here to share stuff with you all. Okay. Okay. So for those who just join us, Here's an introduction. Um, my name is Eric Ng, Huang Yin Ren. I'm a songwriter, I'm a music producer. I play a few instruments, I'm a music arranger. Um, it, okay, so before, let, let's, let's take a pause for a while. Music arrangement, for those who are not in the Asian uh, music community, uh, is actually the same thing as music production. Um, because uh, where you lay tracks and all that stuff that's called music production so music production and music arrangement is actually the same thing it's just that uh, we in the c-pop world uh, have was more accustomed to calling it uh, the role of the music arranger yeah so i'm also a touring guitarist and i teach and i founded this monk uh founded this company for called funky monkeys so um these are some of the artists that i've worked with uh, some of them you might know uh, some of them you might not um but yeah, because basically, why are we doing this hosted session today? It's because I was supposed to be here today. Um, I'm also a touring guitarist, so I'm also touring with uh, an artist called Zhou Hua Qi and Joaquin Chao. And um, you hold on. You want to say hi to everybody? Okay, there you sit on there. Yeah, my kid is here. She also want to learn about music arrangement. So, um, yeah, I'm supposed to be touring right now to give today because we just finished an album called Shao Nian and it was very well received. Uh, we had a lot of fun and we were supposed to have 30 over shows this year and we ended at two shows. So, um, but everybody is taking it positively and we are thinking how can we make use of our time. Uh, so that is why this whole hosted session came about. Um, instead of, you know, we are musicians, we are creative people, you know. So instead of being stuck there and say, ah, you know, people cannot come to our school, so game over. No, we decided not to do that. And we decided to tweak the um, format a little bit. So because usually in our open house, what I will do is, uh, what our, our team will do is we will share, okay, um, what's the school about, what kind of courses we teach and all that stuff. But I thought we wanted to do something a bit different and a bit more meaningful today. So instead of talking about what courses we offer, we will just go straight into giving you guys a glimpse of what goes on, which is why we did this step-by-step -step lyrics. Uh, and just now we did a step-by-step -step melody in songwriting, and now we are doing step-by-step -step music arrangement. Uh, we hope that with this, um, because in, at FM Pop Music School, um, one of the main driving force of the school is passion and having fun while uh, learning something about your passion okay so um then so yeah that's the spirit of the school and we decided that to extend it out to anyone out there who's interested in learning about any of the topics whether uh, whether you're a music lover or whether you just or you really want to get into this or you're just doing this for fun i think this workshop today we want to share with you the basic tips of at least what goes on when we do what we do so that you can get started on it anybody can get started on it um, as long as you have that passion okay so um these are some works that i've released recently uh one is with like the artist that i'm touring with called Zhou Hachian, that we are supposed to be somewhere in china now playing in stadiums um and recently uh i've written and produced a song for the k-pop market called uh, I pray together with um, a Malaysian friend called Kion Chia uh, and the song did well so we are very happy and um, today I thought that we can share more and um, other than 
me being alone doing what I do and having the school teaching what we teach, we actually have an ecosystem where we have a publishing department where we are managers, agents for songwriters, singer songwriters or music producers, uh, where we try to push um, the works for songwriters or producers, especially to artists like what you see in the screen. Um, these are artists that we have worked with over the years, whether it's us or our writers, and we are constantly looking out for new um, musicians to come and join us to you know, experience the thrill of the Chinese pop market together with us, the Asian pop market actually, because now that our writers are starting to move into the J-pop and K-pop market as well. So with that, um, we can talk about this step-by-step -step music arrangement. Yeah, other than that, um, we also started this idea because like I say, um, I think what, one thing I'm thankful for is that uh, given the reality of music making in Singapore, we are in such a small country, um, and that the that there's so much huge markets out there. Um, the best is for us to be able to survive doing music is by diversifying. So that's why I have so many slashes at the beginning when I was introducing introducing myself. And I think that um, one thing every musician should be doing right now is you know we are in this situation. What can we do to think out of the box? in the area of expertise that we are in and i'm so happy to see like so many of my friends doing stuff like uh for example like ben Ham and the cold cut the uh trio duo sorry um they, they are all thinking of new ways to engage their audience online I, th I think that's a great thing to do because we have to do something we cannot just sit down there and you know and um of course i'm not also, disclaimer, I'm not saying that if you're going to sit down there and do nothing, you're, you're wrong. No, there's no such thing. I think everybody has their own way of dealing with it. But at least for me, my own what, what we've been trying to deal with it is at our school level is how can we extend our uh, sharing experience to people who really want to learn something but are online and they cannot get out of the house. So we did this crash course called Stay Home Learn Music. So there's we have a crash courses on songwriting, music arrangement, and all that stuff. So if you are interested, come and join us. Um, I think we're not we're not gonna you know in a crash course make you into like a superstar producer, but at least you might have something a uh, piece of knowledge for you to be entertained, for you to expand or you know join us for further training if you want. Okay, so let's get to the core of this today's thing, which is what is music arrangement. Okay, or what is music production? First of all, uh, yeah, I want to share what we're going to be learning today. We're going to be learning in the first place what is music arrangement. And then uh, what are the basic mu building blocks that create a music arrangement? And then uh, what is what are loops? Okay, uh, how can we use that for music arrangement? And what are other ways of doing music arrangement? Okay, I'm going to share that um, and then I'm going to teach you guys some a very simple drum thing that you can use to play around. I mean, because in this COVID situation, I spend most of my time reading, writing songs, uh, <laughs> practicing with my daughter, guitar and drums, uh, no, piano and drums. So I've been spending a lot of time, um, what do you call that, uh, ex exploring a lot of free resources or sharing sessions from from drummers and and pianists and all that i i, I think later i'll share some of my um the things that i found on on the chat so that i'm not on the chat i'll probably short share on the facebook group so that you know everybody can explore you know um and then finally yeah i of course i want i i would want you guys to create a music arrangement with me but it's a little bit hard uh but never mind we will see what we can make out the best out of this again okay? so so the first thing before we even talk about music arrangement slash music production is we have to establish what's the difference between writing a song and making a, a piece of music into a turn a piece of music into a music arrangement or music production okay 
because this is a, a question very frequently asked. Um, anybody got an answer for me? What's the difference between writing a song and arranging a piece of music? Do I have any brave volunteers? You can turn on your mic anytime. Testing. Yes, testing. Um, well, I think... <laughs> okay, music, uh, songwriting is basically writing out the melody of a song. Yes. Yeah, and then arrangement is how you use different instruments and things to make that song into a final product. Oh, hey, hello. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that is a, a, a good way of saying it. Um, anybody else want to give it a shot? Because there's no one answer, you know what I mean? So what else? Anybody want to try? The difference between writing a song and arranging a piece of music. Okay, June says arrangement is what is called Pian Chi. <laughs> You're not wrong. La. You're not wrong. Is there anything, any other answers I can get? Hello. Yes, Testing. hello. Hello. Uh, I think, uh, sorry, I think it's when you, you write your own melody mm -hmm. and, uh, and all those things, but uh, arrangement is probably when you have somebody else's uh, melody but you uh, arrange every other thing from that uh, melody line itself. Yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, both of you guys have clear and good similar answers. And of course, that is correct, you know. So the thing here is um, for those maybe who have never written a song uh, or, or, or creating something. Lah. So what happens, like for example, uh, um, like for example, any song, what song? Um, like the shape of you, <laughs> for example. Uh, just now I kept using the sh the Ed Sheeran shape of you because it's popular, right? So um, so if you if if consider, I I know Ed Sheeran actually wrote this song with collaborators going on, but if take take for example, if Ed Sheeran was there playing just his guitar and singing, um. The, the melody and lyric of the song. I'm in love with the shape of you. Da, 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 da. Um, that is considered the song. But then if you listen to that song with just one guitar and with the melody and lyrics, you will notice that there is a difference in the feeling and the experience of listening to the song, right? I mean, I have some um, examples here. So for example, uh, let's go to... Let's, okay, let's... Let's take, for example, this song, which um, I'm very sure a lot of young friends never heard this song before. But this song is the song that uh, started my whole music journey, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, so let's say if I play this song. So this is one example of a song, two songs with different way of arranging the song. And for those who are on Facebook Live, if you think this is so weird, right? Uh, then you go on our Google Meets, then it'll be a bit more clear. Um, then there's another song that I can use this from our one of our students from the Songwriter Music College. Uh, this is a song that he released. What is the similarities and what is the difference? I think the difference is that for the uh, full arrangement, right, there are more layers, sir. Uh, Mm -hmm. More layers added, but for the um, if let's say the the other acoustic version is more stripped down, okay. but that's the main difference. Yeah, what's the similarity? Like the lyrics, the uh, chords, the no, I guess the 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 music wise like still stays the same now. You mean like, the, there any difference? the melody and the lyrics? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good answer. So I mean, so basically as uh. That's now Dion and Don got un uh, answered, right? Um, for the the songwriter, what? Because I I'm I'm playing double role. I I I write songs and I'm also a music arranger and a producer. Um, when I am in my songwriting cap, I am thinking what's the most effective melody to play. I mean to compose to 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 create that melody that comes out of the singer's mouth. 
together with lyrics. And then that's my role as a songwriter. And then after that, when I'm done with that, the my next mission is how can I package this piece of music so that it will sound like what you will hear in um the release product, lah, you know. Um so in short, if you're looking at the slide, the songwriter, our main role is uh writing the melody and the lyrics with underlying harmony. That means like just now Joy was saying that the, the chords are quite similar, you know. So that's our uh, songwriter's role to create the harmony and the melody and the lyrics. So the music producer or the music arranger's role is taking that piece of information and dress it up so that you have a complete piece of music. Um, however, I like to stress that nowadays, a lot of these things are, are going on at the same time. Like for example, um, when I was uh, writing the the song for for Super Junior with with Keon, we are we are doing it at the same time, you know, like the ar music arrangement and the song is all going on at the same time, and there's overlapping roles, you know. For example, I I'm I'm both the songwriter and the music arranger. Things are going on at the same time, but um, both have different mindsets. Both have to have a yeah. You have you have a different mindset whether you are arranging or you are you are writing the top line, the the song portion. Um, I I would say that for 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 those who are here just now during the melody composing, I, I was saying that I enjoy songwriting because it's 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 really something very abstract. You know, you are just pulling notes out somewhere, creating a nice hook, creating a nice motif, and then you have this music and lyrics. You know, um. For when I'm putting on that music production, music producer, music arrangement kind of um uh, mindset, then I'm thinking in a different way. Really, it's not so abstract anymore. It is I'm thinking of um more technical terms. I'm thinking of frequencies. I'm thinking of uh layers. I'm thinking of dynamics. Um, there are certain technical know-how you will need to get used to when you are doing the music arrangement part. So that is why it will definitely be, it's not essential because uh, I know that there are certain music arrangers who can create super well done produced songs, right? And they cannot actually even press a B7 chord, for example, but they have the right uh, music sense and they can piece together um, maybe ready-made loops to be able to create that or they can actually draw lines I, i'll be showing you all these guys all this later you can you can draw lines and then you know and, and create a music arrangement without even touching the, the keyboard you know so that yeah, that there, there, there is but like i said that it, it create it has two different kind of mindsets so um so what does a music arranger or producer have to do uh you will have to let's say if um like for example, if you notice just now the second song, uh, the the Mandarin song that you heard, the acoustic version is slightly slower than the original version. So um, that's the part of that's the task of a music arranger. We have to think of the suitable tempo for our song. We have to think about the, how we want to structure the song. You know, for example, if just now I was doing a stripped down version, I can do for example verse, chorus, and then maybe just a chorus. You know, because maybe I want to make the song a bit shorter. That is also what a music arranger is thinking, you know. The music producer head is thinking, how can I make what I have now, these layers or lack of layers, and create it in still the engaging way, in the still in the same structure that we can engage the audience. So with that being said, even two guitars, there is there is a way for a music arrangement to be done. Actually, a uh, 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 um, I I long 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 time ago, I I joined this uh songwriting competition um where uh JJ Lin was also one of the participants, and uh, there were a few other uh, producers, and we all joined this competition. And for that competition, I I won um best arranger, but I only I had only one instrument that that was a guitar. Um, but the reason why they 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 told they shared with the the crowd that the reason why they gave me best arranger was because um 
there was I, I created uh, an arrangement out of just one instrument. That means I uh, there was places where the dynamics would go down. There's places where the notes were more or less. They they could feel a flow even though it's just one arrangement, uh, just one instrument. So. A music arranger doesn't mean that you need to dump a whole load of rubbish inside just to call yourself an arranger so that you can arrange things. You just one instrument, you can also create a convincing way of producing the flow of the music so that it is engaging. Okay, then after that, like um, we can choose the instruments that we want to use. So uh, certain place you want keyboards, certain place you want drums. That's what we, we as a music arranger need to be thinking of. Uh, we can add complementary chords because um, there are certain times for a certain music style, you will be able to you know, add uh, a, a bit of a nicer chord, I guess, to, to, to complement the song. A music, as a music arranger, you can do that as well. Um, and then we should be able to create uh, an engaging and easy to remember introduction to a song, the interlude to a song, you know, all this stuff. And and finally, control the dynamics of the song through layer, layering, or, you know, pen instrument, one side, left side, right side, using the rhythm to create different variations or using the chords. These are things that we have to consider when we are making a music arrangement. Um, and and like I want, I want to stress again, it might not be something that you actually physically play. It might be some very good uh, music loop, pre-programmed music loop that you will be throwing inside that makes it work. You know, yeah. Analyze some songs um, that that you guys sent me just now. So I want to share, which I thought it was a cool example from um, Lim Shuling first of this song. Maybe after that, I can hear from her or from um, anybody else. Also share what your feelings towards it. Okay, let's say we listen up to here. Um, maybe Xiu Ling can start first. Why do you like this? Yeah, uh, for this one, um, there's quite a lot of instruments inside. What instruments do you hear? Uh, I think there's acoustic guitar, electric guitar, in drums and mm -hmm. bass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I thought that's quite interesting how the song is arranged and then uh, especially the chorus. I think there isn't really like a chorus there, so it's like a guitar instead. Okay. Okay. So what okay, is uh let, let's let's state down what instruments you heard. So you heard electric guitars, mm. uh acoustic, and then what else you heard? Drums and what else? Mm, the bass. I think that's also do you call it the piano or is it uh the keyboard? Can you hear that? One long note going on. Can you hear that? Hello. Uh huh. Can you hear? Can Can you hear that? There's a, a a long note thing going on behind. Yeah. Yeah. So that that is that is like keyboards uh, but they're using strings to play. Uh, uh, keyboard. I mean, using keyboard to play strings. Sorry. Anything else you heard? Mm, I think that's all I can identify. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, then maybe Len, we find another example. Um, so what happens is there is um in the in keyboards with a with a good keyboard, right? You can do so many things to it. I mean, with good keyboard sounds. Uh, let me uh, on my so there is especially in Chinese pop songs. You hear a lot of this uh, kind of um, like floaty ambient kind of sounds. Um, let me call it up. Uh, okay. Um, pad, for example. Oh, let me yeah, let's just use this. Okay. Okay. So, for example, you know. You guys can hear that, right? Or well, maybe not such a, a heavy one. Right? Maybe not exactly what you heard in that song just now, 
but that kind of vibe where it is um yeah, maybe something like that you know okay okay so these are called pads okay um what do they what is the function they serve you know um if you hear right you cannot really hear any attack you cannot hear any note you know like especially for example when you play piano boom you can hear the notes loud and clear right like the the notes but this is more like a like it's all lumped together and it just creates the harmony it creates the chords i'm pressing chords by the way you know but it does, you cannot really hear the attack that's why we call it like a pad it's a padding to put to layer below when there are very very silent sections to fill up the sound to to, to let the the experience of you know it's not just one piano that is laying the foundation okay so um let's pick another song for example when i i, I saw one of the um observations was the Zhi Fei Ji, this song that i wrote for sandy lam is one guitar but actually it has about six guitars inside you know so there's a lot of layering going on um so if you are in really interested in in uh, music arrangement right um then the first step is to listen to the songs that you enjoy and slowly start to pick up the layers at the beginning it's going to be tough because you're going to seemingly think that everything is slumped together in one big giant ball but if you listen closer and especially if you've got nice headphones or good speakers or anything right and when you really listen then you can suddenly feel wow there's so much things going on actually in just one simple part you know you 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 will start to realize this and actually it makes you enjoy the song way more i mean uh, when i'm doing music arrangement or when i'm trying to analyze other people's music arrangement i end up really you know enjoying the song much more so let's go to this jam track by don obviously there are some people here who have arranged music before so um but for those who have not arranged music before it'll be good for you guys to check out all these answers because you are starting to see um instruments that are they are being break, broke down into even further details you know uh, some, people, some people say sweet some people say got pet um i don't think i'll use the scene yeah so you, you have to be actually more sensitive then you start to see this whole thing like unravel in front of you you know um and and and, and as we go along right okay see for example one example is um <laughs> Groove makes up a very important part of music arrangement, and when as as is, I would say it's about one third of the success of a music arrangement. So if that's the case, right? Then when we as a music arranger, when I'm analyzing drums, right? I won't say drums really. I will say I can hear a kick drum. I can hear a snare drum. I can hear a, a 808 a kick. I can hear a live snare. I can hear a, a, a electronic high. If you are really um, interested in music arrangement, okay. Uh, last song. So now I want to. Um, okay, let me look at your answers first. Huh? Got rap. Okay, so the thing here is right. One thing about uh, if you want to start to be aware of music arrangement, right? You got to start to hear music without the singer. You know. Um, you got to not hear what the singer is doing anymore because that that what the singer is singing is like I say she's bringing out the message of the song, but when I'm talking about music arrangement, right, we have to take a step back and try and isolate the singer, and instead study what else is happening around the singer. Okay, so what well, piano spam reverb? <laughs> yeah, there's kick drums, kick feels muted. Yes, there's a out playing on top of a there's an alternative harmony playing on top okay um let me check okay um i mean answers are all correct okay um but for those who cannot really pick up all those things have, it, there's no worries about it because everybody starts off like that especially as music fans you never think we are always thinking about what's the singer singing 
but we sometimes don't really uh, concentrate on what's happening behind. So if you are interested in music arrangement, this, this, this is a, a, a way you can try. Okay. And now I want to pick my own example, okay? Because so far it's all Chinese songs. That is actually the sound of a uh, traffic light. Yeah, it was um, it was uh, the sound of the the what do you call that um, in Australia when you cross the road, this is the sound and the rhythm that the <laughs> the traffic light makes. Like tick, 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 tick. Then he he used that thing and used it <laughs> in the hi hat and it won a Grammy. Respect, man. <laughs> yeah so let's get back to this huh? um okay so yeah so when you arrange uh, uh, when you start to um analyze music arrangement right you will start to see patterns you know you will start to see categories that are common in every song there are songs uh, there, there, there are there are there are elements that you will not escape from you know you definitely need to have a form of groove as a, a form of rhythm whether it is done using the acoustic guitar for example uh, Ed Sheeran's Shape of You the, the a lot of rhythm stuff was done on acoustic guitar or whether it's a live drum or whether somebody I saw somebody wrote drum machine or whether it's percussion shaker or even using the traffic light thing to be a, shake, a hi hat and you, you you or you use just now um, the uh, liang liang right there was a uh, all those ethnic chinese instrument to create the all the stuff so you you always have a groove section and then you always have a harmony section because with harmony meaning there is instruments playing playing more than one yeah i was supposed to be a piano but this this will work as well you know there's always harmony going on so that there is a sense of chords supporting this song so that the singer can identify the key and sing along so harmony will come in the form of like guitar or piano or synthesizers or, or you know brass as in trumpet or saxophone or it's uh, in some cases they use the strings the violins the cellos to create the harmony and or they will use these like the Liang Liang's example, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Okay, but um, there was uh, all that ethnic instruments to create harmony so that the singer knows what is the key of the song and how to sing. And then there's always a low uh, frequency that is providing a base, a foundation, so that this whole thing can come out as uh, a solid product, you know. Because that, so that is the first thing that anybody has to uh, be aware of if they want to create a music instrument because um i i i i've i've, I've run into many many uh friends who start to do music arrangement but they they don't really know what is it that they are trying to aim for so at the first thing they do is they just dump everything they can and then they just, they just throw onto the 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 daw or the software just throw it on there and hope for the best you know but um if you have a roadmap to follow it will be so much easier. So for example, okay, now I'm telling you, okay, every successful music arrangement has these three elements, right? So if that being said, at least it'll be easier for me. Okay, I'm going to have drums because I want to satisfy the groove component. I'm going to have uh, a piano so that I can satisfy the harmony component. And then I'm going to have bass so that I have the bass. So for example, that's now the... Um, the, the the bad guy song boom 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 that's the bass guitar providing the the foundation right so that the singer can sing on has a has a very sure idea what is the bass note so if all this is a bit alien to you right it is normal um but i hope today at least you all have a bit of uh, keywords that you can use and go onto google with all the stay home time that you have to explore even more um, insights into what's going on. Or we have that crash course that I'm telling you about where we share all these concepts um, in a more layman basis. So at least you get a good direction. Because the thing is that YouTube is full of information, right? So how can we uh, curate this thing? Maybe you can help you with that. Okay, so like I say, um, music arrangement. Once you have this... Um, roadmap of these three elements 
at least you won't get so lost because um yeah you have a map to follow groove harmony and bass okay so let's go back to the <clears throat> let's go back to the songs just now you were okay the traffic light sound what component it was trying to satisfy anybody i'm going to state down here again huh? there, there's there's three components that is in every music arrangement groove harmony and bass groove correct right because it provides that rhythmic element to move the song okay so for example um the uh, the, the both of the jam songs they had piano what what is it supposed to satisfy harmony and groove actually that's a good answer you know because the piano if you notice right it is not just playing boom boom it's not it has a it, there is a rhythm going throughout that creates a, a, a rhythm lah, right so it is actually a super good answer it is both um fulfilling the harmony compartment department and the groove department okay cool um and then for example the bad guy boom 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 what is it supposed to say? groove and bass because why is it not harmony because you need more than one note to to have harmony you know what i mean right so you need to have uh, at least two to three notes to establish a chord but the bass guitar is just playing the the foundation fundamental key ma, right so it's, it's satisfied the bass and the groove component so you like you see so in every song that we chose okay uh, what was the first song that we chose uh, a, uh, okay for example the strings in the liang liang song what, what is it supposed to be okay harmony and sometimes a little bit of bass because the the cello is also playing the bass note okay but mostly it is the role of harmony <laughs> okay so what i'm going to do now right is i'm going to show you all how to create a simple um arrangement using loops from garage band okay so i have you guys heard of this song called scars to your beautiful this song is to me a very successful music uh music arrangement because it covers the three elements but in a very effective and minimal way of doing it okay so uh when i'm approaching a music arrangement right the first thing i want to do is i want to fill up the groove component because the groove is like a leader the the, the rhythm is like a leader um imagine if your piano is playing a certain rhythm but the drums is not following right it's just gonna be haywire lah, okay so the first thing we should do is add a groove to it so i'm going to these are loops from from garage band it's like default loops okay so i'm going to throw this here i use the flute to play a melody guide so that you all know where you are in the song so this is just a loop i just threw into from garage band into into this song is so uh for those who don't know what are loops they are just like um uh, 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 uh rhythmic patterns or harmonic patterns of like one section where you can just copy and paste copy and paste which is what i'm doing just now see at first it, it just started from one beat and then i just loop it until i feel happy with the world uh like yeah right so i can actually loop it which is like copy and paste huh? copy and paste so now i got i got my groove component okay that's it okay so after i have groove what am i supposed to do i still have what other two sections to to satisfy okay i have harmony right so harmony or bass doesn't matter you you, you can just try any one of them um so let's pull out Mm, bass okay okay so now i have my 
uh, groove and my bass. So now, finally, I have my harmony, right? So, yes, maybe just I'll throw in this piano. And there I have it. I have my three, I have my three um, concerns areas covered. So with that, right, so if you can see, right, if you have that concept of it, right, you layer three um, elements inside, it is definitely not the most complete arrangement, but at least there is an arrangement concept inside and there is a picture for a singer will be able to, uh, to, to be able to sing this song, okay? So yeah, there you have it. Uh, with groove and harmony and bass, we satisfy all three and then we got um, in, in less than one minute, right? Uh, that that uh, less than five minutes. Uh, we, we manage to create a, a music arrangement. But the problem about doing that with working from loops, it is not in, uh, uh, wrong or anything, but... Um, oh, no, the flute is the, hum, the melody of the song. I'm putting the flute there uh, as the melody of the song so that you all know what am I doing. I'm not just creating a minus one, then you all will be, be lost. So the flute is the melody of the song in this case, okay? So um, if you hear from this versus the original version, what do you think is different between what I just did and the original version? What are the differences? Anybody? You can use the mic or you can use the typing. The background sound, as in the the the, the tone, uh, the, the the instrument selection. Anything else? Um, is it like the tempo is also different? Tempo is the same. Okay. I I use exactly the same tempo. Yeah. Dynamic levels, yes. More instruments, yes. Original as well mix, yes. Okay, so the thing here is right. Um, if you notice just now, because when you're working with loops, so this is called loops, right? It's basically yeah. Uh, the, the 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 playing style, the sound, the structure is set there. You cannot really play too much with it. Or you might have to spend a lot of time to, to, to adjust it until it's exactly the same as your vision. Um, and also in terms of the beat, the drum beat is, is not the same as what you what uh you heard in the original one. This is a bit you know, the drum beat is different, the bass odd. I mean the, the bass notes not exactly the same. The piano also, the chords are different. So that is like, um, uh, but it is a good way for you to get started with first doing music arrangement, getting the feel of layering all these things. And then, but once you get to a point where perhaps you want to be more zoned in to your vision, you know, like for example, I don't agree with that. Um, I don't agree with that uh, drum beat. That I heard in the loop, and I cannot find anything that goes. Hey, I cannot find any. Hold on, uh. yeah. I cannot find any uh beat that is exactly like a loop. So there goes your restrictions. There it shows your restrictions if you are trying to create a music arrangement from using loops, just pulling in loops. So um, if you go deeper into music arrangement, you will find that uh, producers not just use loops, they also create music arrangement from scratch. So the advantage of this is now I can play the exact chord that I want, I can use the exact sound that I want, 
I can use the exact beats that I want and the bass notes and all that stuff. It's all within your control. So that's the difference between creating a music arrangement from scratch and from loops. And I, I want to say again, this will be a bit more level up because then you will have to know a bit more about music instruments. Yeah. So uh, I think for most people who, um, who what do you call that? Um, learn piano before or learn guitar before. One of the mysteries, especially when they are trying to create music arrangement, right, is what makes up uh, the drum set. What makes up the loop. I mean, what what makes up a, a groove? You know. So I thought I would just quickly share with you all the few basic elements in a drum set, so that you are more aware of how to build up your own groove. Okay. Okay. So basically, um, can anybody name me the uh, components of a drum set that you will usually find? While I call up my drum set, I will... Okay, uh, while I've called up my drum set, then I'll look at answers. Right. Okay. Okay, components of groove. What do I see? Snare, hi-hat, right, cymbal. Everything is toms. Everything is good, okay? So, rim, yes. So, um, but because if you don't want to confuse <laughs> and, and totally freak out those um, music lovers who came and joined us, right? We let's um, categorize them into the basic form of it. So, okay. yeah, can you hear this? Can okay, I? So this is the thing that you hear in clubs, or you hear when uh, you, you hear in a, 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 a rock band or whatever, right? And that low thumb thing is called a kick, okay? The kick drum. And then there's this, then you see, and you guys can see snare. The marching thing that's called a snare okay so this these two things usually you guys will be able to tell uh, you know then but the thing here is then there are more details in the drum set so like if you can see in the whole list down there right you see some people write right so is it okay here so this is called the right and then you have the hi-hat Right, so this hi hat is that that I will show you all the picture shortly. Okay, okay. Uh, can... Sorry, Eric, you're yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I I I I'm gonna show you now. Right. So if you look at the drum set now, uh, so can you see the kick? That's where the drum set is. That's the part of the drum set that makes this sound. Then the snare. Can you see this thing moving? That's a snare. So you got a kick, you got a snare, and then this, this uh, ting -tang, teeny looking thing is the hi hat. So then you have crashes. There, and then you have this thing called a right. So, so I, I will list this down in the chat. Okay. So it basically, but if you are totally new to all this, right? Just know three things, okay? The kick, the snare, the hi-hat. Enough already for now, okay? There's more things like the tom, like... Don't care about that first. You need to care about what makes the foundation or the groove, which is the hi-hat, the kick, the snare. So, okay? So, um, I'm going to show you all... So again, the kick from the front view, the hi hat, and the snare. Okay, these three things. Then, um, so I'm going to share with you all today a very simple, a uh, beat that y'all can play around with. It's called the eight note groove, uh, which is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, if you're going to count that right, if you have one, two, three, four, one, two. 
three, four. And then you have the snare on two and four. Usually, by the way, I'll have people doing this with me, lah, but today, yeah, unless you can stretch your hand out of the screen. But uh, I'll just show you like that, okay? So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So the snare is going to be on two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? Then, once you have this, this is called like the back beats. Lah. You got the, 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 the skeleton of the groove, right? So you want to make it even more developed, right? So that everybody can follow you. So you're going to have a hi-hat on every eight notes. So it's going to be... This is, I mean, you can take a screenshot if you want. This is like a, how to program an eight note groove. So if you have the hi-hat, right? Top. I mean, you have a metronome, top. Three, four. You can program this, okay? If you if you But this, just this groove, right? There's so many many songs that you can uh, elaborate out of just this groove. I would say, uh, the pop charts, right? I think maybe definitely more than 50, 60 percent, or maybe eighty percent of songs, especially in Chinese pop that you hear, right? Is just based on the eight note groove. So if you have this thing. Um, uh, of course, you can add, add more stuff here and there, but with this skeleton, right, you can program many, 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 many songs. Okay, and by the way, that is also like the groove of um, uh, this song. Now you know how to program BD Gene. Go and have a fun, go have fun with it. Okay. Um, so the flow of building an arrangement. Um, so usually, hey, that's why I also had this question during the melody composing. What should we do once you got a song? So the first thing for music arrangement, I will for arranger, I will find a key, a suitable key for the singer to sing in. Then once I know what he or her, his or her key is, I will find a suitable tempo. Then I will actually program a melody guide, which just now you hear the flute sound, right? Is actually to a, a melody guide. So I know where am I going in the song. Otherwise it's very empty, just arranging drums and whatever. I don't know what's happening. I have a melody guide, so I have a roadmap. Then the fourth thing is I will place the groove inside first. That's the most important thing, more than everything else. I have a melody, so I know where's the song going. I put the groove first. Then whether I want to put bass or harmony or frills and all that stuff, that's optional. That's, uh, that, that sequence is optional already. But the first thing is the groove should go in first. So with that, um, I'm going to quickly just arrange um, this song from scratch. Uh, Scars to the Beautiful. Uh, I'm just going to put this thing here so you all can see while I'm doing it. Then after that, we, I can, uh, we can be open for questions. Okay, so for example. Okay, so. So I, want, I need to... I want I want to put the groove first, right? Okay, so I have the groove there already. And I'm I'm following is like like, 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 like like I was saying right now I have full control of how I want the rhythm to go, okay. So let's let's say if you listen to this right, and I'm gonna show you guys a very magical thing if you all if you all have never touched a DAW before, which is uh, this music arrangement software. So if you are looking at it right, the timing. Exactly on beat if you are listening to it. Um, I can purposely even play even more often. Try, uh. yeah. Try, uh. yeah. Okay. Okay. For example, I purposely play a bit off. Can you hear like it's a bit off, right? So there's this very magical thing in a digital audio workstation called quantize boom everything will be nicely in time now i sound like a machine 
Okay. So then, so I have my groove, right? So I want to play my harmony. Okay. So it. So let's do this. So then I got my piano down. And then again, same thing. If I'm playing a bit off, right, I just press quantize and then everybody and the world is at peace again. Okay, then the last thing I need to do is add a bass in. Okay. <laughs> Same thing, so if it's a bit off, I will just quantize it. So now we can hear the whole thing, all the three layers uh, within my control because I can choose the sounds and I can play the exact rhythm that I want. Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> it's a sound that I, I made lah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So. Okay. I I I can see that there's questions. Let's I will answer them. Okay. So, but before that, I want to wrap this up. Okay. So um. So what I just did was, uh, choosing the sounds that I want to create, um, and satisfy the groove, harmony, and bass. Of a song, so and and because I'm doing it from scratch, right? I can I can control this whole thing, you know, and I can I can um do the song exactly as how I hear it. So that's the advantage of arrange arranging from scratch versus arrangement from loops. Then of course there might be um people who haven't started this yet will be very stressed out, right? But don't be stressed out, okay? The thing here is I don't know whether you notice not. The playing, the things I'm playing, right? It's not very fancy, you know. It's not like I'm not doing that. If you if you listen to a lot of hit songs right down down there, right out there, right now, right, there's not a lot of going on. It's more about the sound choice than the actual um technical ability of the song, you know. So uh, if you have a very basic uh foundation of whether it's piano or guitar. Which is prefer which is pre which is preferred lah because those are the two more commonly used kind of um instruments right uh for harmony then you can start trying to play with this music arrangement and like I said music uh there's a lot of things that you can do in music arrangement in your digital audio workstation in the DAW I was using Pro Tools previously I was using GarageBand and and whether it's GarageBand or Pro Tools, right, there's a lot of magic that you can do that by right you cannot do. It, there's a lot of music arrangements that I'm putting out, out there, right? If you ask me to play live, right, I will just fall flat on the floor, especially if it's piano things. But with a digital audio workstation, I can cheat my way out and, you know, quantize things or create extra harmony that I couldn't be doing physically, okay? So, if you're interested... Go and have a blast. It's 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 fun. I mean, to to be able to do stuff. Um. So if if you want interest, if you're interested in this, these are a few things that you will need to have. I mean, like a laptop for sure, or a desktop, a computer, a digital audio workstation. So that that software that enables you to do all these things that I'm doing. Basically, it's just like a uh a, a a place for you to put many many tracks inside. That's just the basic function of a DAW. So there's GarageBand, there's Pro Tools, there's Logic, there's FL Studio, there's tons of them, okay? And all of them all work the same. It's just what it's just like a car, you know, what brand of car you are interested to drive. <laughs> it's all the same, okay? They all perform the same function. You will need uh if you if you want to start to play around all the you know, be able to do things from scratch, then you will need a MIDI controller, which is a, a keyboard that I plug into my 
laptop to control all the sounds. Um, if you want, you can have additional music instruments like um, guitars and all that, uh, to, 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 or a real bass guitar for you to fill up if you want. And you would, if you want to record uh, guitars or your voice or whatever it is, it'll be good to have a microphone. Uh, and you will need an audio interface if you want to connect <laughs> uh, uh, certain instruments into your um, into your setup. And then you need something to hear with, which is the monitoring system, which is whether speakers or headphones. The very good news is, right, um, if you go and Google Billy Eilish's uh, recording setup, you will see that she and her brother won a Grammy with the, the setup, right, is super cheap and affordable, you know. The microphone that she's using costs about 80 US dollars, you know. So the, the thing here is technology has allowed us to, to go crazy with our creativity at a very affordable entry level. Yes. So to, with that, I covered what is music arrangement in a nutshell. The basic mu building blocks you need, their groove, your harmony, What's the other thing? Uh? The bass, yeah. And then um, I show you the difference between the same song, arranging it from loops where I have no control versus arrangement from scratch, which I have full control. Yes. And then I also taught you that uh, how to program uh, the groove of Billie Jean, which I, one of the questions is, can this be used for slow songs? It can be used for any song. Slow song, fast song, middle song, any song, any song you want. Hokkien song, Chinese song also can. Okay, then, yeah. And then with that, if we have any questions, so that I can look at your questions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can this be used for slower songs? Yes. The, that, 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 um, that Billie Jean thing. Uh, that's, uh, uh, I think I would say that 80% of Joe Jie Lun's songs are especially the ballads I, I, now I say 100% of his ballads are based on the 8 note groove 8 note groove yeah that, of course there are things that you can elaborate on top of it which is like for example just now the the like like this is the 8 note groove right right and then you can do like Like adding little kicks or adding snare, adding snares inside or adding kicks inside or adding this or any that, but the foundation is the eight note groove. Is the grandfather of all pop music. Yes. What is um? Yeah. The okay. Then the Hui Ting was asking the wah 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 in the 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 bass right. Oh yeah, I was you. Um, it is a preset. So that's another that's another um tip about um doing music arrangement. If you have good sounds, it will make your life so much simpler. You know, um, of course, uh, certain good sounds are a bit more expensive than other good sounds. But if you do your homework, you will be able to get by with finding good sounds. Huh? okay. So for example, like the the drum set I'm using right now is called Superior Drummer Three, right? I didn't even do anything. I didn't even mix it. I didn't even whatever. But the sound comes out. You know, it's it sounds great, what you know. And once you have good sounds, you automatically get inspired to create cool things. Or like just now, the the pad that I was using, it sounds cool, what? It sounds like so many things are happening at the same time, right? But I'm just pressing three keys, and I feel like a king of the world. And I press four, and I feel even cooler. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you have good sounds, there's a lot of things that you can play with. Um, and then, like for example, just now the bass that I was using, yeah, is 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 a plug-in called Trillion, and it, it when I press it's, it's like that. I didn't do anything, you know. The sound is like that. The preset we call this preset. So, um, what makes certain plugins uh more useful than other plugins is that. When you open the plug in, I mean, okay, plug in meaning that the instrument, uh, when you open the instrument, right, they give you a lot, a lot, a lot of different sounds inside. So um, 
the the better plugins are the ones i mean for me lah uh, the the better plugins are the ones that come in with a lot of sounds that i just wow sounds good you know i mean i don't need to care so much because i for me when i'm doing a music arrangement i'm always thinking about the song i'm always thinking about creating so i uh, this is my own my own deal uh, i don't like to be bogged down by well how can i make this song sound better blah, 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 blah. I just want it sound good and ready, you know, and then I'll move on. Same thing for drums. Uh, other than acoustic drums, we also can. This is uh, like a drum machine kind of sound. So yeah, good sounds will get you a long way. Yes. Um, more questions. Wait, let me look at your questions. Uh, um. Headphones versus speakers, which is better? There's no better or worse. Um, it, it depends on what you have. Uh, it depends on what you have uh, and, and to, to make full use of what you have, you know. Um, you know, when I, when I uh, first started doing music arrangements, I was actually already doing music arrangement and productions for artists such as Zhang Xue You or... Um, uh, Chen, Chen Zhongqi, these are people way ahead, one, uh, way before, like pioneers. Lah, okay, I'm, I was arranging music for all these kind of A listers, right? Um, the, but when the producer came to my house, he got a shock because all he saw was two creative speakers and a subwoofer, which I bought for about $25. Yeah, so I was doing, I was doing all my music arrangement with two creative speaker cubes and one subwoofer. Which I bought from Sydney Square, and 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 that was what I had to do to get by, you know. And then slowly, 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 then boom, my house becomes like that. You know, it didn't, it didn't. Oh, it was not like that overnight, you know. It was like a, you know, I mean, especially when we are doing music, um, let's not get our gear, as in our equipment. Let's not let the gear rule you. You know, I mean, you should be understanding the concepts and then buy the equipment that you think can help you not just buy because you know it's cool you know so um another question uh, i i saw a few questions about not lead um yeah like i said now if you like the lead buy the lead you know <laughs> if you like the not lead buy the lead if you think it's useful for you buy it you know or you have the money it's just lying on there take it and spend it you know <laughs> but it, whether i'll recommend it or not it's up to you man because um different I, I have, okay, again, I like, I love to quote Billie Eilish because they are making such crazy things out of very, very simple equipment, you know. They, they're not even using like high-end blah, 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 you know, but they are creating, what's more important to me? Um, I want to touch the audience or I want to impress the sound engineers. For me, I want to impress the audience. I don't want, I don't care whether the sound engineers say, hey, that is wrong because the sound engineer is not going to buy my music i mean they will buy my music but there's definitely less sound engineers than there are normal people around the whole world you know what i mean so what what is the what is what is the aim you have to know before you think what is good or bad right um i got more questions here uh is from from elvin what is the difference between a dynamic mic and a condenser mic so a condenser mic is what I'm using right now. Um, this is a Neumann. I don't know what. Uh, what oh, uh, Neumann something. <laughs> it's a it's a Neumann one seventy. I think. Yeah. Um. It, it, the condenser mics are mostly what you see in um, especially in Chinese music, uh, Asian music when they are recording vocals, uh, acoustic guitar. They are more sensitive. As in, they, 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 they can, um, they sound, they capture more detail, but they are more fragile. As in, if you drop this mic, I think I have to send it for repair already. Then there's dynamic mics, which, um, which are more hardy, which are used more in live situations or like uh, very hard hitting situations. For example, like snare drum, you, know, you can capture it on a dynamic mic and all that, but it doesn't capture so much high end detail and all that stuff as a condenser mic. I don't know whether that is good enough, but if not, then Google what's the difference between dynamic and condenser. Yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, 
is Ableton from Amanda. Is Ableton Live more difficult to use? Uh, okay, so the thing about um, music arrangement, right, other than having this concept, right, the first and the next important thing is you need to have a DAW. You need to have some way to capture your idea. And like I say, all different, all DAWs perform the same basic function, which is to record more than one track into this software so that you can start arranging it, right? Um, and although they all have the same concept, but just like a car, you know, for example, like I say, right, you know, there are some cars, the, the wiper is here, some cars, the wiper is here, right? And then once you get into the other car, you're like, every time when you want to turn right, your water comes out of your wiper, you know? So um, the difference between all DAWs is, is similar. Some will have certain functions in this place, some will, it's just what you're used to. So if you go and try using um, uh, Ableton Live and you like it, by all means, use it. It is also a very, very um, well-known DAW. Uh, for me, I started out using Pro Tools. So that's why I've been using Pro Tools all my life. Uh, I came from an ancient time where Pro Tools was cheaper than Logic. I mean, yeah, it was cheaper than Logic at that time. So I've been using Pro Tools all the way because we are talking. This this um session is more for for entry level, right? Let me find um. Is it possible to use GarageBand for music arrangement on just the iPhone from Sherry? It is definitely not impossible to arrange music on your iPhone, but you will have way more restrictions. So it's just like that's now I was saying the, the difference between doing for loop. Uh, arranging with loops and with the 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 what do you call it from scratch, right? Um, that if I'm arranging music, just don't they, don't even talk about the iPhone. Even when I'm doing music arrangement on just the iPad, there are certain things that you will not be able to assess versus doing it like that. So, but then if you are just trying out, there's no harm. Huh? You can just take loops, so, but you would probably just be restricted to arrangement using loops nothing wrong with that might be a good way for you to get started uh, which is again the main uh, uh, the main aim of us doing this session today whether it's melody or arrangement just some simple things you can guys can get started once everything is good and going on uh, why not explore more yeah <laughs>